Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to take a break from our creepy cryptid stories and scary things that happen in field work to take a look at one of Ireland's most famous women, Dorcas Darkie Kelly. A woman whose story has gone down in history purely because of the strange surroundings of her death. And she has gone down as supposedly Ireland's first serial killer. Potentially a witch, but definitely a whore. But the story of Dorcas Kelly may not be as straightforward as it seems. Of course, any story involving a witch, a serial killer and a whore isn't exactly the most straightforward of tales, is it? So first of all, I'm going to talk us through the supposed tale of Dorcas Kelly and then I'm going to go into a bit more detail into what actually happened and probably what inspired her fable. So let's get into it. So, the famous story of Dorcas Kelly tells us of a woman who ran her own brothel in Dublin in the 1700s called the Maiden Tower. Dorcas Starkey Kelly supposedly murdered a shoemaker by the name of John Dowling and was thus sentenced to death. On further investigation of her brothel, five other bodies of men were found, making Dorcas Starkey Kelly Ireland's first serial killer. It wasn't a straightforward case, however. Rumours quickly spread around Dublin that Dorcas Kelly had in fact become pregnant with the child of then Dublin Sheriff Simon Luttrell, the first Earl of Carhampton. Simon Luttrell was a well-known member of Dublin's Hellfire Club, which many rumours surrounded the Hellfire Club in that they carried out satanic rituals and the likes, but in reality it was probably just a gentleman's club. The rumours further stated that Dorcas Kelly had demanded money from Simon Luttrell, who is said to have then accused her of witchcraft and of killing her baby in a satanic ritual, even though the body of the baby was never found. Dorcas Darkey Kelly was then arrested and tried for witchcraft on the orders of Sheriff Luttrell, and then was partially hanged and burned at the stake on what is now called Bagot Street in the Dublin city centre on January 7th, 1761. But there were a few discrepancies in this story depending on what source you hear it from. First of all, until recently it was widely accepted that her tale and execution happened in 1746, not 1761, which was the date of her death. Originally Dorcas Starkey Kelly was also just arrested for the murder of shoemaker John Dowling and it wasn't until 1788 when a news article about Sheriff Luttrell's son, Henry, did the story break that Dorcas had actually murdered five men and become Ireland's first serial killer. So what is the full story? Do we really know what actually happened to Dorcas Darkie Kelly? Was she a witch? Was she a whore? Or was she simply a woman wronged? For centuries now, the name Dorcas Darkie Kelly was the stuff of Irish legend. Accused of witchcraft and satanic rituals, the bleak tale of a brothel owning madam who became the country's first serial killer is embedded in Ireland's lore. Kelly was yet another female killer, a witch, a vengeful force who sparked terror into the hearts of good people and had to be stamped out as violently as possible. The history of subversive, unruly and dangerous women has inspired many fascinating stories and they remain a key foundation of how we understand our past. Such is the case of Dorcas Kelly, a real person whose shocking legend has long become separated from the truth of her life, death and alleged crimes. Very little is actually known about Dorcas's life before her arrest and execution. Contemporary reports of her supposed crimes don't help matters either. We don't even have paintings or images of her from her lifetime. In truth, Dorcas Kelly is a woman whose legacy is exclusively defined by her death. We know that Dorcas Darkey Kelly was a madam who operated her own brothel in the southwest region of Dublin city centre, and in 1760 she was arrested and convicted for killing a shoemaker by the name of John Dowling. The following year she was sentenced to death by a partial hanging and then burned at the stake. Curiously, men found guilty of murder at the time were only hanged, without the additional burning, something saved purely for the women at the time. An account of the execution that took place several years later gives an idea of what Dorcas Kelly may have had to suffer with in her last few minutes alive. 
She was placed on a stool, something more than two feet high, and a chain being placed under her arms. The rope around her neck was made fast to two spikes, which being driven through a post against which she stood, where her devotions were ended. The stool was taken from under her, and she soon was strangled. When she had hung about fifteen minutes, the rope was burnt, and she sunk till the chain supported her, forcing her hands to a level with her face, and the flame being furious, soon she was consumed. After her death, Dorcas Kelly was mourned by fellow sex workers, and a riot ensued over Kelly not being allowed a proper wake. Thirteen of those women would end up in Newgate Prison on charges of public disorder. The story of Darkus Kelly remained dormant for a couple of decades before a 1788 report in the world newspaper reawakened the tale and added some colourful embellishments that stuck around to this day. Now the Darkie Kelly story included claims of mass murder. The world reported that her brothel on Copper Alley had been investigated by local police and that they uncovered the corpses of five men hidden within the vaults. None of these allegations appear in the contemporary accounts of her trial, but they prove too juicy for everyone to ignore or even question. The lore only became more scandalous as the years passed. The Dorcas Darkie Kelly story became even more lurid with the addition of an out of wedlock baby, a malicious nobleman and some good old fashioned witchcraft. Whispers had soon spread that Kelly had become pregnant with the child of Simon Luttrell, the first Earl of Carhampton, and a man who had earned the dubious nickname of the King of Hell because of his shocking behaviour. Luttrell, whose father had been a commander in the Jacobite Irish Army, was a known regular of Dublin's brothels and a member of the aptly named Hellfire Club, one of many men-only establishments for the wealthy and troublesome gentlemen. While such venues were most likely typical social clubs for drinking, rumours soon swirled that they were a place for noblemen who wished to indulge their darkest desires. The name Dublin Hellfire Club, of course, didn't help this. Simon Luttrell was said to be a regular visitor of Dorcas's brothel, and after that, she soon became pregnant with his child. Dorcas, like any woman at the time, would demand financial support, of which he denied. He then accused her of witchcraft, claiming that their baby was killed as part of her satanic rituals. There is no proof of an affair, a love child, or an infant-side sacrifice to the devil, but it certainly added to the growing allure around Dorcas Kelly many years after her death. The truth is, the origin of Dorcas Kelly's myths and legends may not actually be related to Simon Luttrell at all, but in fact his son Henry. Henry Luttrell, like his father Simon, was also a regular visitor to Dublin's brothels, and in 1788 he was publicly accused of raping a 12-year-old girl. The girl in question, Mary Neal, claimed that she had been enticed into delivering a letter to the house of brothel madam Maria Llewellyn, only to be bundled inside and attacked and raped by Henry Luttrell. Maria Llewellyn was described as a sister to Kelly, although it's not known if this was because they were biologically related or it was simply a close friendship born from a shared occupation. Maria Llewellyn was accused of entrapping Mary Neal explicitly for Luttrell to rape her, a claim of course he denied. Eventually Llewellyn was arrested and charged for witness tampering. The case became a major public drama and Luttrell never faced any punishment for his crimes is unknown what happened to Mary Neal. Dorcas Kelly had nothing to do with this case of course, what with having been dead for 27 years by that time, but the two stories seem to have been melded together in public consciousness. Of course, one devious prostitute is as good as another in history, so it seems, as has unfortunately always been the case. The history of women engaged in sex work is one that is either entirely erased from our memory are turned into endless cautionary tales of fallen women and the inevitable cruel fates that they met. It seems that they had two options, be the corpse or be the beyond evil witch who slaughters men, eats babies and deserves to be burned to death. Both options are unbearably cruel, but the latter has a bleak 
an admittedly questionably subversive edge that has drawn people to it for centuries. It is why we see people like Dorcas Kelly celebrated as radical folk heroes. So there we have the story of Dorcas Darkey Kelly, or at least somewhat a story. Did she murder John Dowling? Who knows? Maybe it was all just an elaborate ruse by Simon Luttrell to get back at her for demanding child support. Or maybe we take the darker view of things and that she did murder John Dowling, as well as the five other people they found in her brothel. But it does seem a bit strange that the five other bodies were only reported, you know, 27 years after she died. It's a bit strange that they didn't show up in the original accounts. But then again, maybe in the original accounts, they were just like, she's a witch. And, you know, the dead bodies just account for themselves. But I think in reality, the whole thing is that she was a sex worker. She was looked down upon by most of society, even though providing an uh, essential service. Certainly one that was used a lot at the time. And in truth, still are. Would the story of Dorcas Darkie Kelly be as elaborate if she wasn't a brothel owner and tied up with the first Earl of Carhampton? Probably not. But that is the story of Dorcas Darkie Kelly. How much of it is true is quite hard to say, really. But it was an interesting one to take a look at Ireland's first serial killer, a witch and also a whore. But most importantly, Dorcas Darkie Kelly was a woman wronged. Unless, of course, she actually was a serial killer, then I guess she wasn't wrong, was she? She was probably dealt with accordingly. But anyway, that's not for me to decide. So, um, thank you all for watching, and we hope you enjoyed it.